Chapter 81 Rare Blood Beast, Young Family You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chu Mu's mental energy had pretty much been depleted. With the intention of being safe, he didn't dare to walk anywhere and everywhere. After finding a hole in a tree, he hid inside. Just after finding this small habitat, Chu Mu felt fortunate because a light drizzle of rain began to fall onto the island, covering the jungle in dampness. The hole in the tree was probably left by some kind of climbing creature. The inside still had a bit of hay, and Chu Mu hugged Emo Xia as he sat inside the tree hole. This position was just good enough to see the sky through the fog that completely covered the island. The field of view on Prison Island was extremely narrow. Being enveloped by dark clouds gave people an even further gloomy feeling. Looking at the vast jungle and horizon, Chu Mu gradually became a bit entranced. His thoughts began to follow the drifting rain and wind as a few scenes from the past couldn't help but appear once more in his mind. Gradually, his expression sullened. Chu Mu had lived with his father, Chu Tiancheng, from a very young age. In Chu Mu's heart, Chu Tiangcheng was like a teacher and a friend. In front of Chu Tiancheng, Chu Mu wasn't as reverent and reserved as he was towards other elders. Instead, he was often calm, and he would communicate from the heart with a smile. Chu Mu, at the age of 15, possessed this sort of calm sophistry and wisdom because of Chu Tiancheng's guidance. Despite always being impolite in front of Chu Tiancheng, he would sometimes even make sarcastic and cutting remarks. Chu Mu still harbored a deeply rooted adoration for his father in his heart. He adored his abundant life experience, his wise and far-sighted thinking, and his powerful strength. Chu Mu really enjoyed this sort of lifestyle. Even though because of his very first soul pact he almost didn't become a soul pet trainer, Chu Mu had never genuinely been dispirited. This was due to Chu Tiancheng's perpetual encouragement. However, good things never last forever. His clan's decline caused the person who would often appear in front of him with a smile to change into the back of view of a person with a hurried figure. He would only speak a few short sentences, or write a one or two line curt letter. Chu Mu also wasn't a child who adhered to his parents, and he was gradually capable of functioning independently. He began to understand that a clan required, aside from the support of the elders, a next generation with potential. In this way, the clan would have hoped for the future. When he was 10, Chu Mu had more contact with other similar aged people from other clans. Various comparisons, competitions, fights and schemes began to constantly appear between these young 10-year-old boys and girls. Only, the first soul pact and the second pact that had mysteriously disappeared caused Chu Mu to lose the ability to compete with similar aged people. The first soul pact, thinking about this, Chu Mu's eyes suddenly became pained and troubled. Each time he thought about his first soul pact, a trace of emotion would always rush forth from his heart. The first soul pact was an enormous shadow in Chu Mu's heart. This shadow caused Chu Mu to faintly ache in his heart each time he thought of it. Simultaneously, it would arouse a bit of anger and determination. Many times, Chu Mu would relate his first soul pet with his mother. However, this wasn't because the two had some sort of relation, rather it was because his mother gave Chu Mu a similar feeling. Chu Mu's memory of his mother's appearance was already a bit hazy. From his impression of her, she always enjoyed immersing herself in his affairs. She had a cool and elegant face, she was a beautiful mother. However, she seldom smiled. Her eyes were like stars that touched people, and that could be considered Chu Mu's deepest impression of her. Only, those eyes were full of hints of haughtiness. This icily arrogant mother would often go away and, within a few years, they would only see each other twice. Chu Mu remembered the last time he saw her was when he was twelve. It had been three years and a half since then, and Chu Mu was certain that she didn't even know of her own son's disappearance and death. Thinking about this, Chu Mu couldn't help but shake his head. His feelings for his mother were extremely weak. Chu Mu didn't even know her name. He had only heard his father call her by her nickname. 
those in the clan also wouldn't directly address her by her name. Normally, they would strangely call her Madame Chu. In Chu Mu's view, aside from the beautiful and arrogant appearance that she left in his memory, there wasn't anything else. The continuous drizzle continued to gently fall. Without the spurring of a violent gale, the curtain of rain was rather distinct. One could make out the full outline of the soaked trees. In between the trees, there was the occasional soul pet which didn't mind the falling rain and would spread their wings and fly towards the grey horizon searching for a suitable place to rest. The weak rain continued for approximately two days. In these two days, aside from quietly cultivating, Chu Mu had also learned the soul technique. Wind Ride In simple terms, the ability Wind Ride could at least make Chu Mu run a bit faster. Of course, its main functionality was to make soul pets faster. Wind Ride was a soul disciple technique and it wasn't hard for Chu Mu to learn. But what made Chu Mu helpless during these past two days was that the White Nightmare had advanced another stage again. In the month that Chu Mu was at Hang City, the White Nightmare had advanced a stage. In the half a month riding Xia Guanghan's boat, the White Nightmare had advanced another stage. Currently, it had reached the second phase fourth stage. Chu Mu had asked Xia Guanghan what stage the White Nightmare had to reach before it could participate in fights. Xia Guanghan's answer was that it depended on the White Nightmare's mood. Generally speaking, a majority of White Nightmares could be summoned to fight after reaching the third phase. However, there were a few stubborn White Nightmare that would wait until the fourth stage. Chu Mu could only silently pray that his White Nightmare wasn't a stubborn fellow. In reality, Chu Mu felt that summoning his White Nightmare to fight right now wasn't too sensible. After all, the species' rank of a white nightmare was extremely high, and whether he would be able to control it while fighting with his weak soul remembrance was always an issue. When the rain had finally stopped and he walked out of the tree cave, he was met with a fresh and clean atmosphere. Chu Mu was about to delightedly breathe in and out when suddenly a pungent smell rushed into his nose. The smell of blood. Chu Mu's eyebrows creased and he carefully hid with Emo Xie behind the tree. Chu Mu had just hid his body when a male covered in blood suddenly fled from the top of a nearby short tree. Beside this male a second stage barbaric dog followed only. The barbaric dog's body was also full of blood and was following the male as he ran. Shua. Abruptly, a bloody light appeared from the top of the short tree. The bloody light traveled parallel to the ground and accurately struck the barbaric dog, instantly severing it into two halves. The internal organs and skeleton were completely exposed to the atmosphere and an eminently pungent smell was added to the jungle after the rain. In the next moment, a creature whose fur was covered in fresh blood scuttled from the tree. This soul pet's build was about two meters, and its fur was abnormally exuberant. Its four limbs were robust and it didn't have a tail. Its head was like a wolf, but it had the horns of a bull which were blood red colored. Rare Blood Beast, dot seeing the Rare Blood Beast, Chu Mu was instantly moved. It could be said that on Prison Island, Chu Mu wouldn't find it strange to see any soul pet. However, the appearance of the Rare Blood Beast made Chu Mu feel extremely surprised. The Rare Blood Beast was one of the four dominant soul pets in Wang Luo City. The clan that possessed Rare Blood Beasts was the clan controlling Wang Luo City, the Yang family. This clan had used the Blood Beast Soul Pet to gain notoriety, and had rushed headforth into the surrounding large piece of territory. Rare Blood Beast Beast Kingdom, Beast Race, Blood Beast Race, Rare Blood Beast Subrace, Middle Class Warrior ranked the biggest trait of a Rare Blood Beast was that it possessed the techniques Blood Yearning and Blood Frenzy. Under the state of Blood Yearning, the Rare Blood Beast's fighting power would increase and it would become fearless. Blood frenzy was even more terrifying. The soul pet would enter a berserk mental state and, after locking on its target, would turn eminently savage and ruthless. Not only would its fighting power momentarily increase, but it would also not spare anything during the fight. Someone from the Yang family, why would one of their people be thrown onto this island? Who else could it be? 
Chu Mu instantly recognized that this rare blood beast belonged to the Yang family because on the rare blood beast's forehead was the Yang family's most distinctive mark. Chapter 82 The enemy met with the blade you are listening at novelfull.audio. The Yang family was definitely the main culprit behind the decline of Chu Mu's clan. As for how he himself ended up in Xia Guanghan's hands, it was from the orders of someone from the Yang family. Once he thought about them, a ball of raging fire ignited within Chu Mu's heart. Let, let me go. I don't have it, I really don't have it. Once the male covered in blood saw that his barbaric dog had been killed, he no longer harbored any intent of resisting and began to beg. The rare blood creature's rows of teeth were exposed. Between the teeth were bits of flesh and blood. It let out a breath that reeked of a bloody stink at the male. The wounded male didn't dare to run. He crawled on the ground and incessantly begged. You even dare to interfere with my plans. A voice came out from within the thicket. A male wearing rather bright and neat clothing walked out from within the jungle. The majority of those thrown into prison island were prisoners. There were times when it was hard to even find things to eat, let alone hope for clothing. It was very rare when someone's clothes were neat and tidy. When Chu Mu saw that the young family person's clothing was special, he immediately felt it to be rather strange. Little me is unlearned, little me is unlearned. I thought that senior was also a prisoner, disturbing senior, I deserve to die tens of thousands of times for my sins. Little me can work very hard for senior, but please let me live. The male that was covered in bruises and cuts and wearing shabby and bloody clothing was probably a prisoner. Cut the nonsense. Where is the map? Hand it over. Yang Jida haughtily looked down upon the prisoner crawling on the ground. Currently, all he had to do was give an order, and the rare blood beast would directly bite off this fellow's head. Chu Mu pried apart the leaves and his gaze fell upon the overbearing Yang family youth. He examined this fellow's face. Yang Jida. After clearly seeing his appearance, Chu Mu was even more flabbergasted. Chu Mu recognized this fellow. Yang Jida was a direct descendant of the Yang family. Even though he was a concubine's son, because of his cultivation, he still had a bit of status within the Yang family. With your stupidity, when I become a soul pet trainer that can summon three soul pets, you will still be vexing over your unproficient and misguided soul-packed incantation. This was a jeer that Yang Jida had made towards Chu Mu at a public occasion. Chu Mu had remembered the words ever since. At the time, Chu Mu's third brother, Chu Ning, had fought a fight with Yang Jida over this and had killed one of Yang Jida's flashy soul pets. However, Chu Ning then received a challenge from the Yang family's older generation because of this, and had one of his soul pet killed as well, one that he had meticulously bred for many years. Since this situation had originated because of him, Chu Mu felt somewhat guilty towards Chu Ning. He had always wanted to exact revenge for Chu Ning but his strength was too small. In front of him, this fellow had mysteriously appeared on Nightmare Palace's prison island. In his heart, Chu Mu felt both suspicion and a heavy amount of anger. It's not with me. It's not with me. Many of us prisoners were brought to this island and many of us have it, but I don't. This little one remembers that our map of the island is with a skinny long-faced fellow. The foreman used the boat to throw us into this place and gave the region's map to a skinny prisoner, said the wounded prisoner. Hearing him mention a map, Chu Mu immediately fished out the scroll from his bosom carefully. He flipped the scroll to the district and topography map drawing on the back. A skinny prisoner. Map. Could it be that Yang Jida is looking for the item in my hands? But isn't this an item used by the people of Nightmare Palace to ensure that this game of slaughter is thorough? Chu Mu was even more confused. If you don't have it, then die. Suddenly, Yang Jida cruelly laughed. In the next instant, the rare blood beast abruptly opened its bloody mouth and ferociously bit the prisoner's neck. Immediately, fresh blood spurted forth and began to flow onto the muddy ground. Truly boring. 
This island is so big and the prisoners are many. How long do I have to kill until I finish collecting all of it? It's better if I return to their place first. Yang Jida spat on the corpse and turned around, planning to leave. However, the moment Yang Jida turned around, a silver figure appeared from within the thicket. Almost instantly, it arrived in front of Yang Jida. A formidable blood-rending claw suddenly swept across Yang Jida's location. Ho! The rare blood beast's reaction was extremely quick and it quickly pounced over, simultaneously performing blood-rending claw. Immediately, two rays of bloody claws intersected, emitting the piercing noise of metal rubbing on metal. Thinking of sneak attacking me. Yang Jida was somewhat astonished before a rather contemptuous look appeared on his face. His eyes locked onto Chu Mu's location. Chu Mu had already confirmed that there weren't any other young family people in the surroundings. He didn't hide and slowly walked from out from the thicket. His two black eyes coldly stared at Yang Jida. Another one courting death. Humph. I'll sort all of this out like the rest, Yang Jida subconsciously believed that the person hiding in the vicinity was a nightmare palace prisoner. However, when he saw Chu Mu's appearance, his words abruptly stopped and he unexpectedly revealed a shocked expression. Chu Mu. Yang Jida cried out. Half a year earlier Chu Mu's disappearance had spread through Wang Luo city. Almost everyone believed that the Chu family's successor had already died. Dot however, Yang Jida didn't expect that the fellow who should have already been assassinated would unexpectedly appear here, on Nightmare Palace's eminently cruel island of prisoners. You probably didn't think I was still alive right? Chu Mu produced a cold smile. Chu Mu's death had become a fact. Yet, the sort of shock from seeing Chu Mu on Prison Island made Yang Jida feel rather alarmed, stunned and unbelieving. You, how are you here? Yang Jida was extremely alarmed. Aren't I just paying respect to what your young family has caused? Chu Mu stood there. Killing intent had already appeared in his eyes. Feeling Chu Mu's gaze, an ineffable fear appeared in Yang Jida's heart. For some unknown reason, Yang Jida felt that the young man in front of him had changed. Back then, at Wang Luo City, Chu Mu was merely an ordinary youth. All day he would hide in his clan under the protection of his family. He was constantly cowering and would never dare to accept the challenge of someone of the same age. However, in the span of half a year, Yang Jida felt that this young man's entire temperament had undergone a change. He had become immeasurably cold, and he was sharp and calm, like a wild beast. Especially those two eyes that unexpectedly emitted a terrifying killing intent. Having been missing for half a year, Chu Mu had undergone the most cruel survival training of Nightmare Palace. Chu Mu had also personally killed so many people during training that he himself couldn't count anymore. Nightmare Palace method of cultivating peons wasn't merely through soul power. They also trained the peons' cruelty. This was perhaps to prepare them to receive the demonic nightmare soul pet. Having experienced such slaughter, how could Chu Mu currently be the same as the naive youngster in the past? Chapter 83 Fourth Phase Bloodthirsty Beast You are listening at NovelFull.audio Even if he's still alive, what is there to be afraid of? Yang Jida clenched his teeth and said to himself, suppressing the unwarranted fear that was bubbling up. How could Yang Jida not know Chu Mu's strength? Half a year ago, any soul pet of Yang Jida's could rip this guy to pieces, and this shouldn't have changed. Rare blood beast, kill him. Yang Jida pointed at Chu Mu, and he telepathically told his soul pet through their mental connection. Ho! The rare blood beast immediately let out a furious roar, stretched out its body, and fiercely pounced towards Chu Mu. The rare blood beast was built very sturdily and could run very quickly. Under the trampling of its blood hooves, the muddy ground created countless mud splashes. Chu Mu, standing where he was, didn't even need to move. Seeing that the rare blood beast in front of him was merely of the second phase eighth stage, Chu Mu didn't have anything to fear. Shua. 
Just when the rare blood beast ran within five meters of Chumu, a silver moon blade abruptly appeared from the forests to the side, very accurately slashing towards the blood beast's waist. Young Jida's battle awareness wasn't bad as he commanded his rare blood beast to immediately dodge. After evading Mo Xie's moon blade, it gave up attacking and backed up a bit. Moonlight Fox Young Jida's gaze fell onto the moonlight fox and let out an expression of astonishment that soon transformed into belittlement. Because of Chu Mu's change in temperament, Yang Jida thought that Chu Mu might have a few strong soul pets. After seeing this moonlight fox, however, Yang Jida had the urge to burst into laughter again. His rare blood beast and the moonlight fox weren't even on the same level. Even if the moonlight fox reached the fourth phase, a second phase eighth stage rare blood beast could still easily rip it into pieces. Seeing Chu Mu revealing such a soul pet, how could Yang Jida not find it humorous? Chu Mu, oh Chu Mu, you really are just like your moonlight fox. Cowardly and weak, Yang Jida originally wanted to summon his other soul pet, but after seeing Chu Mu's moonlight fox, he felt there wasn't the need for it. Obviously, the fear he felt previously mostly stemmed from a misperception and a lack of confidence. In reality, Yang Jida wasn't wrong. Chu Mu was very much like Mo Xie, but, they weren't similar in that they were both weak and cowardly. They were similar in that they were both calm, decisive and, when angry, merciless and crazy. Mo Xie's species rank was very low. Coupled with pitiful appearance, these were the fatal mistakes that almost all soul pet trainers made when judging Chu Mu, and Yang Jida was no exception. Seeing that Yang Jida didn't summon another soul pet, the corner of Chu Mu's mouth rose into a demonic smile. It seemed like the intentional holding back in the first two attacks was having its expected effect. Rare blood beast, devour that pitiful little fox. Yang Jida commanded straightforwardly through speech. Facing such a low species rank soul pet, the rare blood beast treated it with the same disdainful attitude as its owner. Mo Xie hunched down in the slightly muddied ground and just as the rare blood beast dashed forwards, Mo Xie started as well. Her silver body instantly flew forwards, spraying mud everywhere, her speed almost doubled that of the rare blood beast. Shadow Assault Mo Xie's body sped up again, raising her speed to the extreme. Seeing the moonlight fox dash forward with such terrifying speed, Yang Jida's expression immediately shifted. Moon Shadow Mo Xie's shadow slowly became fuzzy in the process of running. Three moonlight fox silhouettes became vaguely visible, running neck to neck with Mo Xie. Blood Rending Moon Blade The combination of moon blade and blood rending claw, even without moonlight, caused the razor sharp arc drawn by the moon blade to be just as radiant. Though untouched by blood, the smear of captivating red that flitted through the air was still striking. Crimson and silver claws ripped through the neck of the rare blood beast. The rare blood beasts stayed frozen in the air, it wanted to swipe forth, but suddenly went rigid. The next moment, blood spurted out crazily from the head of the blood beast, flowing out endlessly. Ho, the rare blood beast let out a strange morning roar as its body heavily thudded into the water puddles, its blood instantly mixing with the dirty water. Seeing his own rare blood beast fall, Yang Jida's face showed extreme fear. He hastily chanted an incantation and before his rare blood beast's blood flowed dry, he retracted it back into his soul pet space. A blood red symbol quickly appeared under the rare blood beast. While the radiance still glimmered, the rare blood beast had already disappeared from its spot. Mo Xie, kill him. Chu Mu naturally didn't let go of any opportunity to attack Yang Jida directly and immediately ordered Mo Xie. Mo Xie continued to run straight towards Yang Jida with her still dot bloody claws shining ominously. Yang Jida quickly backed off a distance, and as he saw the bizarrely quick Mo Xie approach, he frantically chanted another incantation. Wind Bind Yang Jida's speed of chanting wasn't slow. As Mo Xie neared, he already finished the casting of his soul technique. A swirling stream of air spiraled up from the ground, 
quickly enveloping Yang Jida within it. Wind bind was a defensive technique. Once it was casted on oneself, the moment any enemy neared, they would be flung into the air. Mo Xie didn't have time to stop anymore so she immediately slammed into the wind bind that had sucked in countless puddles of mud. Wu, the power of the wind quickly threw Mo Xie into the air. Mo Xie continuously spun in the air until she finally fell into a quagmire ten meters away. The effects of wind bind slowly dissipated. Yang Jida's face muscles were still quivering, his face seemingly pale. Clearly, Mo Xie's lethal attack had killed his rare blood beast. Even after Yang Jida retracted it, he still couldn't stem the flow of blood from the rare blood beast's neck. The rare blood beast was clearly Yang Jida's second soul pet, so the death of it would inevitably cause damage to his soul. I'll tear you to pieces. Yang Jida's facial expressions contorted and started chanting again. Chu Mu knew that Yang Jida still owned a stronger soul pet. At this distance, Chu Mu couldn't cast any techniques either, and could only let Mo Xie raise her guard. Yang Jida's incantation finished very quickly. The blood red symbol that emerged shined a glaring red radiance, and from within the red light, an even larger organism covered in blood red fur slowly appeared. Bloodthirsty beast. Chu Mu stared at the soul pet that emerged from the symbol and put on a grave expression. Bloodthirsty beast. Beast kingdom, beast type, blood beast species, bloodthirsty beast subspecies, high class servant rank the bloodthirsty beast was a sole pet even crueler than the hunting wolf, where its species rank could compare to many low class warrior rank organisms. Furthermore, the bloodthirsty beast that Yang Jida summoned was a shocking fourth phase first stage sole pet. Ho! The fourth phase bloodthirsty beast immediately let out a wild roar that scared all the nearby smaller organisms away. The bloodthirsty beast's speed and strength are both very strong. After going berserk, it will be even more terrifying. Mo Xie it'll be hard for you to deal with it, let Ning finish this. Chu Mu said to Mo Xie. The power of the bloodthirsty beast was very terrifying and Mo Xie's defense could be said to be very weak. The moment she got hit, it could very well be fatal. Let alone the fact that Chu Mu hasn't even figured out all of Yang Jida's soul techniques. Under these circumstances, Chu Mu didn't want Mo Xie to have any accidents. Wu Wu. However, facing the bloodthirsty beast's arrogance and malevolence, Mo Xie had no fear. Covered in dirty blood, she still kept her battling stance, her silver pupils fixed onto the blood beast as if a fire burned within. Mo Xie. Feeling Mo Xie's emotions of battle, Chu Mu felt a bit bewildered. Although the disobedient emotions weren't strong, it was still the first time Mo Xie hadn't directly listened to him. Chapter 84 Species Mutation, Proud Mo Xie, 1, You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Since you still want to fight, fight as much as you want. Chu Mu could feel Mo Xie's arrogant fighting dignity. In reality, no matter the strength, battle experience, techniques or mutual understanding, Mo Xie's was at a much higher level than the Ice Air Fairy. The Ice Air Fairy possessed a sturdy defense and powerful ice magic, but that was it. Relying only on its second phase sixth stage strength to defeat a soul pet that could rival a fourth phase low class warrior rank would be rather difficult. Moreover, Yang Jida now knew Mo Xie's strength, so he wouldn't give her another instical chance, after the fourth phase bloodthirsty beast, he would definitely summon another soul pet, so Chu Mu definitely had to keep a few trump cards. Ho ho! The bloodthirsty beast stepped into a measured pace and immediately its body aura was violently released. A dense, bloody aura surged forth and engulfed the surrounding area. The nearby plants were successively bent over. The fourth phase bloodthirsty beast's bloody aura collided against Mo Xie, causing her stained fur to stand up. Mo Xie didn't get rid of the dirty stains on her body and let the dirty sewage roll off her body drip after drip. Her keen pupils motionlessly stared at the bloodthirsty beast. Ho ho! The bloodthirsty beast faced Mo Xie and let out a roar at her. 
its four hooves abruptly stomped on the ground. The bloodthirsty beast was one of the young family's symbolic soul pets. Chu Mu was extremely knowledgeable of the bloodthirsty beast's techniques and abilities. Currently, the technique that the bloodthirsty beast was using was earth splitting trample. It was full of vibration properties. Chu Mu knew of earth splitting trample's might and instantly retreated to a safer location. Mo Xie, who was directly facing it, gracefully jumped up and over the fissure that suddenly appeared. Ho! The bloodthirsty beast seemed like it was waiting for Mo Xie to dodge, as it suddenly opened its mouth and spat out a blood-dot-colored tornado towards Mo Xie. The blood-dot-colored tornado's speed was extremely quick. The instant Mo Xie landed on the ground, she was attacked by the tornado. Mo Xie didn't have time to dodge, and could only use her claws to tenaciously grasp the ground. Hu hu hu, a dense, bloody whirlwind covered Mo Xie's tiny body. The fur on her body immediately changed and transformed into a kneeled woolen fur, which resisted the spurring of the tornado. Although the impetus of the tornado was extremely intense, the rotational power was also abnormally strong. Very soon, Mo Xie's body was picked up by the blood-colored tornado and was once again thrown into the air. This bloodthirsty beast has an additional wind attribute, Chu Mu's eyebrows creased as he looked at the bloodthirsty beast that could use the blood-colored tornado. Clearly, Yang Jida's bloodthirsty beast had used soul crystals to train. Wind riding, that Chu Mu naturally wouldn't just watch from the side. He quickly chanted an incantation and used the recently learned soul technique, wind riding, on Mo Xie's body. Mo Xie had already lost her balance in the air. However, after the effects of wind riding, Mo Xie's body lightened and she immediately found her balance. With one flip, she smoothly descended onto the ground. Humph, a garbage soul technique. Yang Jida coldly sneered and then also chanted an incantation. Nature's force. Root bind. Yang Jida's hair fluttered wildly and, as he was chanting, the surrounding plant suddenly underwent an odd change. The trees swayed in a weird fashion and the ground produced a peculiar noise, as if there was something squirming. Feeling the abnormality from the mud under his feet, Chu Mu immediately said something to Mo Xie. After speaking, he chanted an incantation again and used rapid freeze, freezing the mud under his feet. The line of ice descended onto the ground and quickly froze the mud, creating a large layer of ice. A five-meter perimeter of land was completely frozen. Bang! Bang! Two roots abruptly extended from within the mud and twisted around like snakes. Only, the ground under Chu Mu's feet had already been frozen, so these roots couldn't coil around Chu Mu even if they wanted to. Ho! The bloodthirsty beast's red eyes immediately locked onto Chu Mu. Its four hooves rushed forth, bringing about a wave of rumbling noise as it charged towards Chu Mu. Charm! Mo Xie quickly appeared in front of the bloodthirsty beast. Her two silver eyes released a demonic luster that penetrated the bloodthirsty beast's eyes. Yang Jida wasn't a normal person either, and seeing that the opponent had used a mental technique, he didn't hesitate to use the dense bloody odor pervading the air from the rare blood beast to make the bloodthirsty beast enter the bloodthirsty state. Under the bloodthirsty state, charm simply didn't have any effect, and Mo Xie's body was unable to resist the bloodthirsty beast's stampede. After letting out a whimpering cry, she was promptly knocked aside. The bloodthirsty beast's charge didn't stop. Yang Jida's target was Chu Mu, who was trapped by the roots on the layer of ice. Chu Mu continued to maintain his cool. His black eyes gazed at the truculent bloodthirsty beast and he silently chanted an incantation. From within the depths of his eyes revolved a sliver of white gloss that gradually caused Chu Mu's pupil to turn completely white, becoming contrastingly and demonically bewitching. Chong Mei, Double Ice Wall Chu Mu once again performed his soul soldier technique. Chong Mei This time, Chu Mu used the mental connection with the Ice Air Fairy to use its ice type technique. Two ice walls instantly sprang out of the muddy ground standing in front of the bloodthirsty beast. 
the bloodthirsty beast's hefty body directly smashed into the ice wall. Immediately, the ice wall began to violently shake. Crush it directly. Yang Jida coldly said. The bloodthirsty beast rocked its head and charged once more, directly smashing into the first wall of ice. Promptly after, it performed blood-rending claw on the ice wall. Two continuous claws slashed forth, and the first ice wall instantly shattered. Woo-woo. Mo Xie had already crawled up from the mud and she now ran in front of the bloodthirsty beast. Moonblade suddenly swept across the bloodthirsty beast's body. However, the bloodthirsty beast's skin was eminently tough. It had at least reached the third rank thick skin defense. Moonblade was only able to leave a shallow wound. Even if blood was flowing, it wasn't able to actually stop its advance. This garbage fox wants to contend against my bloodthirsty beast. Your sole pet is like you, you're both trash. Yang Jida contemptuously swept his gaze over the weak moonlight fox. Woo woo. Mo Xie was able to understand the ridicule in human speech. She completely bared her fangs and narrowed her eyes. It seemed like she was about to erupt. There's no point in yelling. Watch your master be crushed to death. A smile had already appeared on Yang Jida's face because, currently, the bloodthirsty beast had completely broken through Chu Mu's ice wall defense. A bloody aura already filled the air. Facing the bloodthirsty beast's attack, Chu Mu's expression still hadn't changed. He calmly chanted an incantation and planned on recalling Imo Xia, before instantly switching in the ice air fairy to resist the bloodthirsty beast's attack. The incantation quickly finished and a light blue colored luster enveloped Imo Xia's body. When the luster faded, Emo Xie would return to Chu Mu's soul pet space. Emo Xie. After finishing the recall, Chu Mu had originally planned on summoning the Ice Air Fairy. However, when the luster faded, Chu Mu abruptly discovered that Emo Xie had not returned to her soul pet space. Instead, she had at some unknown time rushed in front of him and was now facing the bloodthirsty beast. Mo Xie unexpectedly disobeyed his recall order. An expression of shock was revealed on Chu Mu's face. Wu Wu Wu. Mo Xie arrogantly raised her head and the sewage on her body suddenly splattered off. In her eyes a demonic radiance brilliantly blossomed. Immediately, the bundle of massive energy coiled up around Mo Xie's fluttering silver fur like a terrifying hurricane. Recklessly engulfing and sweeping away everything in the surroundings. Demonic aura permeated ubiquitously. Chu Mu abruptly discovered that Emo Xie's fur was ceaselessly fluttering as she stood in the middle of the demonic aura whirlpool. Her originally fluffy tail underwent an unexpected transformation, astonishingly splitting into two tails. Chapter 85 Species Mutation, Proud Emo Xie, 2 you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Hu hu hu, the hurricane's eruption continuously spurred within the surroundings. In an abrupt moment, a ball of faint demonic fire rose into the air from the terrifyingly, all dot encompassing, demonic aura whirlpool. Another transformation appeared on Imo Xie's tail, which had split into two, and astonishingly, her tail changed into three long tails full of a bewitching aura. Together with the vagrant ball of fire, it became a triangle that ignited in the air around Emo Xie's body. This, this is, Yang Jida was a bit stupefied as he watched this scene. An incomparably weak moonlight fox unexpectedly released such a powerful demonic aura. This demonic aura could rival many warrior rank demonic beasts, and was perhaps even stronger. Emo Xie's tails continued to proliferate, and with each additional tail, Emo Xie's demonic aura increased again. When Mo Xie reached the fifth tail, Yang Jida's fourth phase bloodthirsty beast unexpectedly revealed an expression of panic. Five balls of faint, demonic fire silently burned. Quiet, demonic light slowly blossomed, causing the silver-furred Mo Xie to become more charmingly demonic. Yang Jida's bloodthirsty beast was already in the bloodthirst state. Under this state, the effect of mental techniques and imposing auras would normally be weakened. However, 
When Mo Xie's tails became six, the bloodthirsty beast simply didn't dare to approach Mo Xie at all. The powerful demonic aura caused the enormous bloodthirsty beast to slowly retreat. Seeing Mo Xie's current transformation, Chu Mu was even more stunned. Chu Mu trained Mo Xie with the hope of Mo Xie heading towards the Nine Tails mutation. However, Chu Mu knew that Mo Xie mutating into a Nine Tail demon fox in one go was practically impossible. This was because before the Nine Tails, there was still the Three Tails demon fox and the Six Tails demon fox. It required a slow upgrading process. Nevertheless, Mo Xie's tails had presently already reached six tails. This signified that Mo Xie had completely skipped the three tails demon fox and directly entered a stronger state. The six tails demon fox. Six imperious tails filled with an unruly aura caused the gradually growing Mo Xie to seem even more arrogant and noble. Simultaneously, it increased her demonically nefarious spirit like a powerful being's imposing aura. Wu. A long, resounding howl rang out and six demonic flames began to rotate before slowly descending. The sort of strange and terrifying flame quickly began to rotate around Mo Xie's four limbs, unexpectedly transforming into hooves of flame that burned under her four limbs. Mo Xie's body was still growing bigger. Her body was now slender and had particular curves, but seemingly possessed an unruly feeling of strength. Her four limbs, torso, waist and head were all currently transforming. This, this is a mutation. Yang Jida was already completely stupefied. Species mutations were an extremely rare phenomenon. Yang Jida had only heard of them, but had never witnessed one before. Especially the case of an incomparably weak moonlight fox instantly transforming into an eminently powerful demon and beast type combination. The Six-Tailed Demon Fox Binoel.m As the species mutation happened to Mo Xie's body, she herself also transformed, and she began to transform into a third-phase Six-Tailed Demon Fox. When Mo Xie had transformed into the Six-Tailed Demon Fox, she was only at the second-phase ninth stage. This aura was already able to force back the bloodthirsty beast. After reaching the third phase, her demonic aura would become even more terrifying. Even Yang Jida, who was standing in the distance, could feel the frighteningly cold demonic aura. It unexpectedly made it eminently hard for his body to move. Mo Xie's body was now twice as large as before. Additionally, her gorgeous but maverick dot like six tails were twice as long as her body. Occasionally, they would stand up like steel ropes while other times they would take on the form of a spiraling silk string that danced in the air. Woo woo. Mo Xie's pupils were completely focused on the bloodthirsty beast. However, one could see two balls of demonic flames burning within her two silver pupils. The complete reveal of a savage blade. In this moment, the only thing in Mo Xie's eyes was this enemy and an inexhaustible battle rage. Who, the four demonic flame hooves transformed into ignition. In the next instant, they left for quietly burning flames in their original position as the silver dot white colored body of Mo Xie had already rushed in front of the bloodthirsty beast. The pursuing Mo Xie didn't use dark assault, but her speed was twice as fast than when she used dark assault previously. Evil Flame Claw There wasn't a sharp edge of a blade or a bloody red light. This time, Mo Xie's claws astonishingly had a layer of demonic demon flames attached. This demon flame burned on top of Mo Xie's eminently sharp claws. It didn't have any heat, but made Mo Xie's claws even more imposing. The bloodthirsty beast's skin had already reached the early third stage of defense. However, it was still incapable of resisting the evil flame claws' laceration and burn. Shua. Blood red skin was instantly torn apart without any resistance, pierced to the bone. Meanwhile, the demon flame frantically spread on the bloodthirsty beast's agape body. Unexpectedly, it began to eat away at a large chunk of the living bloodthirsty beast's flesh and internal organs. Mo Xie's evil flame claws began to rip open the bloodthirsty beast's shoulder area, and the demonic flame started to burn its torso from its shoulder. Its burning speed was extremely quick, 
almost as if everything was being instantly devoured. Her four limbs gracefully moving, Mo Xie swept through the air like she was using a momentary levitation ability. Her flame hooves lightly touched down in the air, before actually jumping again. She didn't need to turn around to look at the bloodthirsty beast with half-dot-burnt innards. Incomparably arrogant, she swept past the beast and her gaze was like a sword that pierced into Yang Jida's heart. Having witnessed this terrifying scene, Yang Jida felt the imminence of his death. Facing this cold demon fire six tails fox, the only thing he could do in this crazily flustered state was to use wind bind. He wanted to use this method to blow Mo Xie away. However, why would Mo Xie, who underwent a mutation and transformation, bother with such an insignificant wind bind technique? Her six gorgeous and long tails seemed to be transformed into six living spirits. As she ran, her tails swung abu, extraordinarily interweaved with each other. Following the six tails' astonishing dance, a demonic fire suddenly ignited on Mo Xie's silver fur. The demon fire didn't have any temperature, but as it swallowed Yang Jida's wind bind, it also trapped Yang Jida within it. Opposing someone whose soul had been heavily wounded twice in a row, Mo Xie didn't even need to use evil flame claw. Her claws quickly struck across Yang Jida's arms, and his arms immediately separated from his body. Ah! A mournful scream suddenly reverberated throughout the jungle. This scream was extremely excruciating as he was hurt to the extreme. Mo Xie could have easily killed Yang Jida in one strike, but misgiving still rested in Chu Mu's heart. Why would he let Yang Jida die painlessly? Wu Wu Wu. Yang Jida covered his flesh exposed arm and painfully lay on the ground. Mo Xie arrogantly stomped on this fellow's body and her six tails spread open like a peacock. Suddenly, a powerful demon aura was thrown at Yang Jida, stunning him. Chapter 86 Evil Flame Six-Tailed Demon Fox You are listening at Novel Full.audio Blood continued to flow from Yang Jida's shoulder. Because of the pain, his facial features were wrought together. The tears and snot made him seem more ugly. Don't, don't kill me. What do you want to know? I, I'll tell you everything as long as you don't kill me, Yang Jida's voice trembled as he spoke. Chu Mu walked up in front of Yang Jida. Seeing Yang Jida's despicable face currently begging for his life like a dog, a smile couldn't help but surface onto his face. Yet, this smile only made Yang Jida feel more terrified. Wu. In the jungle, Chu Mu raised a dagger with one hand and fiercely stabbed it towards Yang Jida's forehead. After pulling out the dagger, a sinister bloody hole instantly appeared on Yang Jida's forehead. Yang Jida still had that expression of fear, and his eyes were bulging out. He opened his mouth and his head gradually fell backwards. Perhaps Yang Jida didn't believe at all that he would perish under Chu Mu's dagger. Wu Wu, after the battle had ended, Mo Xie's two eyes gradually turned soft, and the evil flames on her body slowly dispersed. The silver white hair covering her entire body proceeded to flutter about in the jungle, lightly dancing about. Chu Mu looked at the mutated six tails Mo Xie. A rather gratified expression appeared on his face and he used his hand to stroke Mo Xie's small head. He said. You've become strong. Wu Wu. Mo Xie squinted her beautiful eyes and rested against Chu Mu's body, enjoying the feeling. Evolving from a moonlight fox to a six tails demon fox, Mo Xie clearly had the ability to skip stages. A moonlight fox was a small house pet that many females liked. It had a gorgeous appearance, but its fighting ability was negligible. On the other hand, although the six tails demon fox also possessed elegance, beauty, and arrogance, its fighting ability was publicly renowned as the strongest amongst its rank. It could even be considered the perfect combination of the demon type and beast type. After plundering all the items from Yang Jida's body, Chu Mu decided to leave this area and find somewhere to hide. He somewhat impatiently opened the in order to find out what abilities Mo Xie, who had transformed into the Six Tails Demon Fox, now possessed. 
After finding the demon fox race, Chu Mu discovered that even amongst the six tails demon fox sub dot race, there was were still a few subdivisions. Ordinary six tails demon foxes, flame six tails demon foxes, and evil flame six tails demon foxes. These three six tails demon foxes belonged to the same species and could reproduce with each other. The difference between them lay in their blood lineage and innate talent. Even if they were all six tails demon foxes, their innate differences would always appear at birth. There were a few six tails demon foxes who didn't have the demon fire or evil flames on their bodies when born. It wouldn't be until the second or third phase before they could control the demon fire or evil flame. However, there were a few six tails demon foxes that possessed this ability shortly after birth. These six tails demon foxes often had an abnormal aptitude compared to others of the same species. Wu Wu Chu Mu was in the midst pondering what six tails demon fox subspecies that Emo Xia belonged to when Emo Xia extended one tail and pointed at the evil flame six tails demon fox. Dot evil flame six tails demon fox. Demon beast kingdom. Demon type, beast type. Demon fox race. Six tails demon fox subrace. Evil flame six tails demon fox. High class warrior rank the evil flame six tails demon foxes were the imperial family of the six tails demon foxes. Their innate talent was exceptional, and even if they were categorized as the high class warrior rank, their fighting ability against similar and lower phase and stage soul pets wouldn't be inferior to a commander rank soul pet. They were one of the perfect combination soul pets of their respective type in the warrior rank class. The evil flame six tails foxes had six extremely beautiful tails. It was said that each one of the demon foxes six tails represented a characteristic. The six characteristics were docility, grace, arrogance, coldness, violence, and a love for slaughter. The fur of the six tails were white, and they controlled the demon fire evil flame. The effect of the demon fire evil flame could cause the power of any fire attribute technique to increase by one fold. However, the burning duration wouldn't persist, and would be cut down to the shortest amount of time. Species Technique Demon Fire Evil Flame Basic Techniques Shadow Claw, Death Assault, Sinister Glare, Blink, Demonic Scare Primary Techniques Evil Flame Claw, Ignite, Flame Dance, and Six Dot Tailed Lock High Level Techniques. Illusion, Fire Rain, Molten Fury After Chu Mu's gaze swept through the Evil Flame Six Tails Demon Fox's techniques, his eyes lit up. A high class soul pet was a high class soul pet after all. Without even mentioning the plethora of techniques, each individual technique was extremely practical. The most important thing was that Emo Xia also possessed the Demon Fire Evil Flame thus increasing the power of any fire-type magic by one fold. In this regard, Emo Xie's flame power was not inferior to many Elemental Kingdom soul pets. It was no wonder that the wood depict the evil fire Six Tails Demon Fox as a perfect combination. Third Phase First Stage, Claws have already reached the late third stage, and the evil fire is now attached to Fierce Claws. Early Third Stage Defensive Fur, Annealed Fire resistant fur. The tails, this, I can't discern them, Chu Mu was planning on identifying the quality of Mo Xie's body. In the end, he embarrassingly discovered that his own knowledge wasn't abundant enough, and he didn't know how to evaluate Mo Xie's tails to their respective stages. Six tails demon foxes were relatively rare soul pets. The Chu Mu bot was a general book, and it gave a description of millions of soul pets. Obviously, it could not give an overly detailed explanation for every soul pet. If Chu Mu wanted to further understand the evil flame Six Tails Demon Foxes, he would naturally have to buy a book that explained the demon fox race. Perhaps he would even have to buy the. Presumably, it would give an extremely thorough explanation of the evil flame Six Tails Demon Foxes. Of course, Chu Mu was currently on Prison Island, and searching for these books was impossible. Mo Xie's species metamorphosis to Chu Mu could be regarded as extremely satisfactory. 
When he thought of the information that Yang Jida gave him before he died, Chu Mu's expression became rather pensive. Yang family, this time, I'll make none of them return. From what Yang Jida said, Chu Mu finally realized why these people had come to Prison Island. Chu Mu had been directly thrown onto Prison Island, and even though Chu Mu's name was on the scroll, he didn't receive any information. Nightmare Palace would only stop by Prison Island once every three years during a maelstrom and throw prisoners onto different locations on the island. Everyone on Prison Island was on death row. There was no supervision, and the merciless Nightmare Palace wouldn't let them easily live on Prison Island. They gave them a step-by-step -step chance to become strong and then leave this Prison Island. In order to reach the 1 in 30 hundred chance of surviving, they would leave generous rewards on certain locations on the island and use a complicated map to mark them out. Next, they tore the map into many pieces and distributed them into a few prisoners' hands. The map was also the scroll, and the front side of the scroll contained the list of dead and alive prisoners. The back side was a map, and if one wanted to obtain the treasures, he or she had to collect all the map pieces from the prisoners. In this regard, slaughter was almost inevitable. As for the reason why the Yang family was here, this involved Chu Mu. The Yang family had originally wanted Xia Guanghan to kill Chu Mu. Xia Guanghan's identity was extremely high and the cost for completing something like this was equivalently high. The Yang family originally hadn't paid much heed to Xia Guanghan and had casually agreed to his reward. However, they very quickly suffered from Xia Guanghan's wrath, whereby the entire family's treasures were stolen by him. However, Xia Guanghan was not zealous over the Yang family's treasures and had presented them to Nightmare Palace, wherein these treasures became the most generous reward for the last survivor amongst the 3,000 prisoners. In order words, the treasure was the marked location on the map. To recover their family's treasures, the Yang family had sent a group of people to covertly enter Prison Island to kill the other prisoners and recover their family treasures. Chapter 87 Soul Technique, Wine Dragon Bind You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. L.O. The Yang clan's influence was very large within Gangluo City. Naturally, they didn't dare spread this incident of losing their clan's treasure, and they therefore couldn't dispatch large amounts of people to Prison Island. From Yang Jida's mouth, Chu Mu understood that the leader of the team that was sent to Prison Island was Yang Zheng. Yang Zheng could be considered to be in the same generation as Chu Mu's father. He was the Yang clan master's third child, a sixth remembrance soul pet trainer. Chu Mu remembered that this person had been defeated by his father. What left the deepest impression was this sixth remembrance Yang Zheng seemed to have a very talented medium class commander rank blood wing trioptic beast. Chu Mu didn't remember what phase that soul pet was, but he remembered that this trioptic beast was abnormally violent. Presumably, the reason the Yang clan's fellows could pass through the fog and hordes of the flying type soul pets was because of this blood wing trioptic beast. Other than Yang Zheng, there were about ten more people. Including Yang Jida, who Chu Mu killed, there were seven spirit soldiers and three spirit teachers. Those were people that Chu Mu didn't entirely recognize, but there was one called Yang Jingli that Chu Mu hated to the bone. Chu Mu's mother was a wanderer. Because of this, Chu Mu's father Chu Tiancheng was alone in many public scenes, causing many indecent and nonsensical rumors to float around about Chu Mu's mother and father. Yet Yang Jingli had pointed at Chu Mu in public and insulted him about it. Chu Mu was only thirteen at the time, and against his bloodthirsty beast, the lonely Chu Mu could only swallow this shame, which became a bomb ready to explode within his heart. Hearing that Yang Yingli was on Prison Island, Chu Mu's inner heart felt stirred, and his eyes became significantly colder. Those Yang clan bastards entered the island, but this was also Chu Mu's best opportunity to unleash his frenzied revenge on them. The original embarrassment and current grudge was enough to let those guys repay their debt with blood. Level 2 Healing Medicine, Level 3 Healing Medicine, Level 3 Recovery Medicine. 3 per type, this Yang clan sure was affluent. Even a piece of trash like Yang Jida had this much medicine. 
He even has a wind-type soul gem. Chu Mu took inventory of the items Yang Jida had. Healing medicine and recovery medicine were both unusually expensive consumables. Level 2 healing medicine, when used on second and third stage soul pets, would allow any wound to quickly heal. The level 3 healing medicine had even stronger effects. Small wounds could completely heal within half a day, while serious injuries that did not affect the internal organs could recover within two days. Level 3 recovery medicine was not an ordinary item. Chu Mu remembered seeing such medicine sell for 300 gold a bottle. Many soul pet trainers wouldn't use such an item lightly unless a crucial moment came to pass. Recovery medicine was a medicine that allowed a soul pet's battling strength to quickly recover. Chu Mu's M.O. Xie, from exhaustion to full energy, took about two days' time. With a recovery potion, it would only took one day. For soul pet trainers who needed to fight in the wilderness for long periods of time, these medicines were extremely useful. It was a pity that they were also very expensive, as many soul pet trainers only bought them to prepare for emergencies, and not to use for every battle. Young Jida was but a third remembrance spirit soldier, yet he had nine bottles of such medicine. That costed no less than 2,000 gold, yet with 2,000 gold one could buy a low-class warrior rank soul pet with high talent. Chu Mu's Ice Air Fairy was high-class warrior rank with top-tier ice-type talent. This type of soul pet would sell for tens of thousands if put on the market. But soul pets like his Ice Air Fairy were extremely difficult to find. Remember, it lived in the center of the living grounds of a massive horde of ice falcons. If not for the little cyan bug's coincidental metamorphosis that got rid of those second and third stage middle class warrior rank ice falcons, Chu Mu would have never been able to contract this ice air fairy. Capturing soul pets was a study full of depth. Capturing soul pets wasn't based simply on species rank. For example, the ice falcons. There were dozens of them who lived in this area, and they were all of the middle class warrior rank but no one would go out of their way to capture all these ice falcons. That is because, on the market, not every ice falcon could sell for thousands of gold. Only those with higher talent than most soul pets of the same rank were worthy of cultivation. The rest become a type of overflowed commodity. Even within the category of ice falcons, some may sell for less than 10 gold while some could sell for over 10,000 as well. With the same idea, the price of a normal nine-tailed demon foxes could definitely not compare with the price of a evil-flamed six-tailed demon fox. The nine-tailed demon fox was a pretty rare soul pet, so even normal ones could sell for over hundreds of gold. As for demon foxes of the royal family like Emo Xie, whose talent matched commander rank soul pets, they were the wet dreams of all spirit soldiers, so their price was impossible to calculate. Other than medicine, Chu Mu also found a soul technique from Yang Jida that he intended to learn, Wind Dragon Bind. Before, Yang Jida casted a spell that tossed the approaching Emo Xia Wei, Wind Bind. It was a very practical defense ability, and this Wind Dragon Bind on Chu Mu's hands was the advanced form of Wind Bind, with defense capabilities that surpassed the normal Wind Bind. However, Chu Mu must reach 6th Remembrance Spirit Soldier before he had enough soul remembrance to completely cast the incantation of the Wind Dragon Bind. Though he couldn't learn it now, such a high level ability's price was still no less than 500 gold, and he could learn it soon. Once Chu Mu learned it, Chu Mu would receive a very good safeguard for his own safety. Wind Dragon Bind could also be cast on soul pets, which may make crucial impacts in some situations. Wu Wu. Mo Xie climbed onto the treetops and released her demonic aura. Proudly raising her head up high, she cast her evil flame six-tailed demon fox ability, Demonic Scare. Sounds of the demonic scare echoed throughout the forest. After a while, the forest within a few hundred meter radius became clamorous as many soul pets who lived there fled with terror. Mo Xie gazed down upon that area of the forest. After she converted the nearby area into her territory, she jumped down from the treetops. Her body lightly fell along with the falling leaves. 
Mo Xie's body slowly shrunk and she became a tiny and exquisite little six-tailed demon fox as she adorably fell into Chu Mu's embrace, letting out a string of endearing calls. Inheriting pitiful appearance from the moonlight fox, it seems that even when you become the powerful six-tailed demon fox, you still aren't willing to get rid of your habit of disguise, seeing Mo Xie with such a petite body, Chu Mu only laughed and started rubbing her cute and fluffy tail. Chapter 88 Stage Advance, 5th Remembrance Spirit Soldier You are listening at NovelFull.audio At night, when the onslaught of cold island air had arrived, Chu Mu was resting under a tree and felt rather cold. Chu Mu didn't sleep, but instead entered a silent cultivation state. Just as Chu Mu was about to feed his soul power to the white nightmare, Chu Mu surprisingly discovered that his own soul power wasn't completely used up and he still had a bit remaining. BDNVL.M, I've become a fifth remembrance spirit soldier, a rapt feeling of ecstasy surfaced in Chu Mu's heart. Soul pet trainers and soul pets were connected through the soul, and if a soul pet became stronger, then the soul pet trainer would also receive a large benefit. Mo Xie's species metamorphosis this time caused her strength to fly up. This also made Chu Mu increase by one remembrance. Once his soul power was enough, his soul remembrance would become even stronger. Not only have I reached the fifth remembrance, I am at the peak of the fifth remembrance. If the Ice Air Fairy enters the third phase, I can reach the sixth remembrance. Chu Mu quickly inspected his own soul remembrance state, and a feeling of pleasant surprise filled his whole body. As long as he pulled apart the gap between his strength and the white nightmares, Chu Mu would have enough soul power to use techniques. He would also have greater control over each technique's power. Moreover, once he reached seven remembrances, Chu Mu could obtain another new soul pet. Even though he could only summon one soul pet to fight, the number of soul pets was a critical point of strength. After all, as long as there was enough soul power, one could substitute the soul pets as he or she fought. The rain had stopped the previous day and when the sun rose, the smell of the clean soil and the forest pervaded the air. A few pleasant-sounding chirps of the birds in the jungle interweaved between the treetops. An excited and cheery atmosphere faced the blazing sun overlooking the island amidst the mist. How are you so stupid? A brat with a second phase six-stage ice air fairy scared you to such an extent that you lost the scroll. Zhang Kuachong and Xiang Liang were half-brothers. They were working together for Nightmare Palace when they attempted to steal from the Nightmare Palace's treasury and were caught. Ultimately, they were thrown onto Prison Island. How would I know that the frozen ice blade technique at that time would be so strong? It had both light and dark rays so I thought it was a fourth phase ice air fairy, Xiang Liang argued. Hmm, what? Can't you see, footprints? Zhang Kuachong immediately made a face at Xiang Lang and pointed at the dried rows of footprints on the ground. It should be him. We should be careful as we approach him. Zhang Kuachong said. The two people quietly summoned their soul pets and slowly walked towards the footprints. Go see if he's in the vicinity. Don't disturb him. Zhao Kuachong summoned his third phase second stage red bird and made it look for Chu Mu's traces from a hidden location up in the treetops. Red birds and cyan birds had many similarities. However, red birds were of the low class general rank, and while cyan birds controlled the power of wind, red birds could start waves of fire. Zhang Kuachong's first soul had suffered from an injury, and he could currently only summon one soul pet to fight as well. The soul pets that Xiang Liang summoned were still the rhinoceros and the blackwood demon. These two soul pets were slow and could only slowly follow the red bird. E. Soon, the red bird transmitted a mental message back to Zhang Kuachong, informing him of what it had discovered. Good, he's definitely dead this time. Xiang Liang, make your blackwood demon control the surrounding earth. Don't give him another chance to run away, said Zhang Kuachong. Xiang Liang immediately made his blackwood demon hide in the jungle, where its roots slowly extended into the ground. Afterwards, the rhinoceros locked onto Chu Mu's location, planning on attacking him directly. Ha, huh, 
this brat is still sleeping. Quieter, Zhang Kuachong quickly discovered Chu Mu, who was half dot lying down under a tree. In Chu Mu's bosom, he was carrying the crafty small fox from before. Let my blackwood demon tie him up first, said Xiang Liang. He silently commanded his blackwood demon to extend its roots. The roots slowly entered beneath the ground and gradually extended to Chu Mu's location. Like silent pythons, they began twisting around Chu Mu's thighs little by little. Seeing that Chu Mu and the fox didn't have any reactions, a smile instantly appeared on the two prisoners' faces. However, before they could be happy, Mo Xia and Chu Mu simultaneously opened their eyes. Hu Hu, Mo Xia freed herself from Chu Mu's hug. The fur on her body began fluttering in the windless air and suddenly an imposing demonic aura was discharged. Demonic fire evil flame immediately ignited on Mo Xia's four paws. Opposing the surreptitiously twisting roots, Mo Xia haughtily and indifferently used her flaming paws to stamp on the roots. Abruptly, the demonic fire evil flame began to spread on the roots and instantly burned them to ashes. After the blackwood demon's roots were burned by Mo Xia's demon fire evil flame, it immediately let out a wailing shout. It didn't dare to launch another attack towards Chu Mu and Mo Xia. What a perfect opportunity to get rid of these two fellows. Chu Mu slowly opened his eyes. His two black pupils stared at the two flabbergasted prisoners, and a demonic smile appeared on his face. Chu Mu maintained a consistent habit. During the night he would silently cultivate until the daytime, when he would enter a short sleep. When Chu Mu was asleep, Mo Xia would be on alert. She had already released demonic scare in the surrounding couple hundred meters. A majority of soul pets had already been expelled from this area of forest, so once any movement occurred, it meant that something living had invaded this area. Mo Xia's perception abilities were not weak, and once the red bird began investigating from above, Mo Xia half dot closed her eyes and pretended to be asleep. Secretly, she was giving Chu Mu a mental message and woke him up. Mo Xie's metamorphosis caused Chu Mu's strength to greatly increase. Currently he didn't have to fear these two prisoners. Kill him. Zhang Kuachong merely regarded the demonic fire evil flame as an illusion. He proceeded to use his mental connection to command his red bird to swoop down from above. E. The red bird emitted a sharp cry as the feathers on its body astonishingly ignited with groups of flames that it abruptly swooped down from the air above and, like a burning meteor, it descended. Facing the red bird's flaming meteor, Mo Xia slowly stepped forth. The silver radiance in her eyes twinkled for a second, and then the evil aura on her body was violently released. Six pillars of silent flames suddenly began floating around Mo Xia, forming a maelstrom of demonic fire that spiraled upwards from her fur and surrounded her body. Pitiful appearances effect had been removed. An evil flame six-tailed demon fox. The maelstrom of demonic fire on Mo Xie's body quickly expanded, and the six originally fluffy tails rapidly lengthened, transforming into six eminently gorgeous and colorful whip-dot-like tails. They incomparably, oppressively, and willfully danced in amidst the demon fire evil flame. Mo Xie's expression was indifferent, and she stood in place. The six tails had astonishingly transformed into tenacious bloody whips which smashed towards the flaming meteor red bird. Pi. The red bird's flames didn't deal any damage to Mo Xie. Instead, its body was struck by the glorious six tails and flew straight back, heavily knocking into a large tree. Hong, when the red bird struck the tree, it rolled onto the ground next to Mo Xie. Throughout this entire course of events, the demonic Mo Xie didn't even look once at the red bird. She smacked the red bird like she was swatting a weak fly. Arrogant, powerful, indifferent. Chapter 89 Following Yang Clan's footsteps you are listening at Novel Full Audio. The evil-flamed six-tailed demon fox's intimidating and demonic aura buffeted the two prisoners. The two prisoners' eyeballs were on the verge of falling out. How did a small, pet-dot-like fox just transform into such an incomparably strong demon fox? 
They were both at the third phase, and the Red Bird was even a stage higher than Emosia, but the difference in power was already very evident. After hitting the Red Bird away, Emosia's eyes immediately fell upon the Red Bird. Those silver eyes shockingly ignited with an enchanting flame. Ignite. A beam of fire instantaneously lit up the area where the red bird had knocked into a tree. The red bird had fire-resistant feathers, so normal flames naturally wouldn't do much harm to it, but under the instantaneous burn of the demon fire and evil flames, this red bird's body still burned up. Its fire-red feathers disintegrated into dust. Following suit was its body, which didn't completely burn up, but already become blackened. Zhang Kuachong's face quickly blanched. Not too long ago his hunting wolf had already been killed by Chu Mu, so his first soul was already damaged. He was just shocked by the imposing manner of the evil-flamed six-tailed demon fox and forgot to retract his soul pet. He couldn't have imagined that a single ignite from this six-tailed demon fox was enough to kill his red bird, which was also a fire type. With both souls damaged, Zhang Kuachong could no longer summon any more soul pets. Like this, Zhang Kuachong couldn't possibly survive in this survival of the fittest type prison island. Kill them. Chu Mu gazed at the two prisoners and said apathetically to Mo Xie. Mo Xie's gaze quickly locked onto Zhang Kuachong, who had no soul pet to protect him. Death Assault Shadow Assault allowed Mo Xie's speed to instantly increase, and Death Assault was an even more advanced form, causing a terrifying boost to Mo Xie's speed. A dark flash flitted across the bushes as if the shadow of a ghost. Zhang Kuachong and Xiang Liang didn't even have time to react. Zhang Kuachong stood in place dumbly. It wasn't until he felt his neck being slit did terror appear on his face. But right after terror, the artery on Zhang Kuachong's neck spewed out blood. Zhang Kuachong didn't even have time to cast a single soul technique. Blood splattered onto Xiang Liang's face as the metallic scent of blood assaulted his nose. Yet, what frightened him wasn't the pervading bloody scent. It was the imposing demonic aura that made him feel as if he fell into a cave of ice. Protect me. Protect me. Xiang Liang frantically called telepathically towards his Du Ju and Black Wood Demon. The Du Ju's speed couldn't even begin to compare with Mo Xie's. In such circumstances, it could only cast meaningless attacks like Horn On. As for the Black Wood Demon, its wood type soul pets naturally had a fear towards fire types, let alone Mo Xie's even higher temperature demonic fire evil flame. Even though the Blackwood Demon already stood right in front of Xiang Liang and adopted a defensive position, it still couldn't stop Mo Xie's evil flame claws. The Blackwood Demon's third rank intermediate stage bark defenses were very fragile under Mo Xie's evil flames, and were ripped apart very easily. Violently surging evil flames quickly spread and managed to cleanly burn away more than half of the Blackwood Demon's body, leaving only the arm dot like branches. There wasn't a single ounce of resistance in Xiang Liang's mind now. Not caring about his soul pet's deaths, he hastily casted wind ride on himself and ran haphazardly towards the forest. But no matter what speed soul technique Xiang Liang used, it couldn't even begin to compete with Mo Xie's speed. Mo Xie completely ignored the clumsy Du Ju and, after running a distance, extended her claws when she was still ten meters away. Her claws swiped past. There were no enchanting flames and no sharp glint, but a shadow flashed past. Ah! The escaping Xiang Liang didn't even understand what happened before feeling a tearing pain in his legs. Right after, he lost his balance and fell into the bushes, rolling around in pain. Let, let me live, I, I can tell you who still has scrolls, feeling the dreadful evil flame six-tailed demon fox nearing, Xiang Liang started shaking all over and abruptly started yelling. Who still has some? Chu Mu walked up to Xiang Liang and asked. Just, just yesterday I saw two people that didn't look like prisoners, they walked towards the north end of the lake. They have scrolls, at least two of them. Xiang Liang said with slurred enunciation. 
Chu Mu lifted a brow and glanced towards the lake not far away. Don't. I also know, I also know the approximate location of the magical treasure. Let me go, I'll. I'll write the answer on a tree bark and let my soul pet send it to you. If it is fake, you can straight up kill my soul pet. Without it, I wouldn't have a way to survive anyways. Xiang Liang said. How would you know the location of the treasure? Chu Mu asked. The reason I was thrown onto Prison Island was to steal the entire map under the directions of someone. I only glanced very briefly at it before being discovered, if you let me go, as long as we gather half of all the scrolls, you will get the treasure. Xiang Liang saw Chu Mu slightly hesitate and immediately smiled obsequiously. But, Xiang Liang's obsequious smile stiffened the next moment. The artery on his neck was just sliced open again. Xiang Liang's face went stiff. His eyes were full of disbelief and confusion. He didn't understand why under such beneficial circumstances would the teen still kill him. Chu Mu mercilessly looked at Xiang Liang's body and simply lifted a corner of his mouth. Chu Mu was probably the only prisoner on the island that went willingly. Making such a decision, Chu Mu's only goal was to become the last man standing. From his perspective, everyone on this island would sooner or later be killed, and the treasure was inevitably his, so he had no reason to play mind games with someone trivial like Xiang Liang, and waste energy determining whether his words were true or false. In addition, Chu Mu had a new target, which was to kill all the people from the Yang clan who entered the island. As long as he had the scrolls, the Yang family would definitely find him. Chu Mu couldn't let people like Xiang Liang, who knew these shortcuts, live. Went north of the lake, I wonder which two Yang clan rubbish they were. Chu Mu eyes swept across the prisoners and after finding nothing of value, he started walking towards the lake to catch up to the two people of the Yang clan. If he could get rid of them, he would do it secretly. If those two people were strong, Chu Mu would naturally give up immediately. Once he got stronger, he would then give them a lethal blow. L. R. G. Chapter 90 Trapped Savage Beast, 1, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. As he continued to walk directly towards the north, Chu Mu noticed that the map in his hands only approximately mapped out the boundary of this jungle basin. Further north from the jungle basin was a towering mountain peak. This mountain was abnormally tall. Chu Mu spent the night at the foot of the mountain, when he heard an extremely palpitating shout. The mountain peak was over a thousand meters high. Being able to hear such a hair-raising, terrifying scream from over a thousand meters high, one could see that the mountain peak clearly harbored the habitats of a few exceptionally strong soul pets. Chu Mu was also self-aware. Since the mountain peak was abnormally dangerous and a number of powerful creatures lived there, Chu Mu had no choice but to go around the mountain, entering into a long and narrow valley. Hu hu hu, the valley wind was very cold, as if sharp blades were cutting at one's skin. Occasionally, there would be a few dead branches and leaves mixed in the wind. In total, it had already taken one month for Chu Mu to walk out of the rather complicated jungle basin, walk around the mountain, and walk on the only valley path that could go north. In this one month, Chu Mu didn't manage to chase those two young family members. Throughout his journey, though, he had encountered many prisoners and constantly fought battles. This made his ice air fairy reach the second phase eighth stage. Mo Xie's strength had also increased by one stage. As for Chu Mu himself, he had finally become a sixth remembrance soul soldier. Ling, although the Ice Air Fairy's intelligence wasn't high, it seemed to be able to discover a few easily neglected places. After Chu Mu heard the Ice Air Fairy's voice, his gaze moved to where the Ice Air Fairy was pointing to. He discovered the thick layer of a moss dot like plant covering the ground in the valley. What's wrong with this? Chu Mu didn't quite understand. Ling, the Ice Air Fairy pointed at these plants again and spoke to Chu Mu in a strange language. Chu Mu had only learned the beast language and had a certain amount of comprehension towards Beast Kingdom's soul pet languages. However, 
he was completely at a loss when it came to the elemental kingdom language. Chu Mu could only use the mental connection between him and the Ice Air Fairy to approximately guess what the Ice Air Fairy was referring to. Are these plants special? You've seen them before right? asked Chu Mu. Ling, the Ice Air Fairy shook its head and sent a mental message to Chu Mu's mind. Chu Mu seemed to understand something and retrieved the book from his pack. He began to look for plant soul pets of this type. As expected, when Chu Mu found what soul pets lived in valleys, information regarding the plant beneath Chu Mu's feet appeared. Valley Moss There will often be a type of third-grade medicinal ingredient, cold grain ginseng, that will grow in areas with valley moss. Cold grain ginseng is the most immediate medicinal ingredient and is of great help towards the growth of an ice type soul pet. After reading the introduction, Chu Mu looked at the ice air fairy and said, It turns out this place has a fine delicacy of yours. No wonder your sense of smell was so perceptible. Lin, the ice air fairy, shook its head. This place is the only path from the jungle basin to the north. There should be many prisoners that use it. If this place has a third grade medicinal ingredient, I'm not sure if it would have already been taken, said Chu Mu. Ling, the ice air fairy seemed to sense the location of the special plant that grew in this sort of cold zone. It walked in front and lead the way. Chu Mu followed behind the ice air fairy as they walked further into the complicated valley. When the ice air fairy brought him into a very narrow path, Chu Mu couldn't help but stare blankly at the dead end ahead of them. The small valley path was a side trail that led to a dead end. Not only was it enveloped by shadows, it was also covered in valley moss. Most people would easily miss this path when they swept their eyes past it. What made Chu Mu surprised was that the ice air fairy was able to find a frosted plant that ran across the wall of the dead end dot like crevice. Covered by this plant was another path. The ice air fairy was in front and led Chu Mu into this rather particular looking valley path. The further they walked in, the colder Chu Mu felt. When Chu Mu walked out of the crevice, something appeared in front of him that made him feel shocked. What emerged in front of Chu Mu was a towering mountain wall on all four sides. Aside from the narrow crevice path they had taken in, there wasn't any other path. The mountain wall was extremely tall, rising steeply from the ground. After walking around in a circle, even after he lifted his head up, all he could see was a foggy sky. Being stuck inside, Chu Mu felt as if he had fallen into an enormous well. The bottom of this precipice was about 50 centimeters squared. Perhaps because it was a unique environment, the plants here were all shorter than normal plants, whether they were trees or shrubs. Nonetheless, this place was abnormally lush. Dot the majority of the plants that grew here were of the yin type. Even though this place wasn't moist, Chu Mu was feeling rather cold. Chi Chi, suddenly, a slight sound of movement came from within the short plants. Instantly, Chu Mu made the ice air fairy put ice armor on him and increased his vigilance. Ho ho! Seemingly at the same moment that the ice armor was added to Chu Mu's body, suddenly, a terrifying roar erupted, violently smashing into Chu Mu's face. This imposing cold intent seeped through Chu Mu's entire body stunning him. Bang! Chu Mu was unable to clearly see the movements of this soul pet that had suddenly appeared. Instead, he abruptly discovered that this soul pet had savagely thrown itself onto the ice air fairy, and its claws suddenly stabbed into the ice air fairy's body. Ping! The ice air fairy's body was like a mirror that shattered. A large empty hole was immediately cut out in the thick ice armor that covered its body. In shock, Chu Mu instantly began reciting an incantation. Promptly, the ice air fairy that had been heavily wounded was recalled back to the soul pet space. Feeling a terrifying gaze fixate onto himself, Chu Mu immediately retreated a few steps before rolling back into the narrow crevice. Ho ho! A claw suddenly extended into the crevice, and despite it not actually reaching Chu Mu's body, the blade's edge managed to shatter Chu Mu's ice armor making his stomach feel a wave of sharp pain. Ho! Ho! 
Chu Mu's face paled as he retreated. His gaze was fixated on the savage beast over three meters long that was in the mountain wall crevice. A shiver went down the back of his neck. Chu Mu hadn't actually walked too far into this sealed off mountain abyss. He was scared of something like this occurring, but didn't expect that this completely sealed off area harbored such a terrifying soul pet. Moreover, Chu Mu currently wasn't more than five meters apart from this soul pet. He could see this soul pet's eyes, and if it wasn't because this creature's enormous body made it incapable of entering the crevice, Chu Mu would have been instantly killed just now. 